Hello and greetings to our audience tuning into the Journey to Gangtok show on Gangtok Radio and Television Station. This show connects and shares images of the land and people of Gangtok from the perspective of someone who loves Gangtok. Today we have a special guest, actor Deng Fa, who is also a lecturer in the theater department at Gangtok College of Culture and Arts. Hello, actor Deng Fa. We're delighted that you agreed to join today's show. Hello, Cúc Vy. Hello to our viewers watching Kangtze Radio and Television Stations programs. We know that Deng Fa is an actor from the early days who participated in many famous films. Can you share what circumstances led you to this profession? I can say, although it's a bit odd to talk about this fate, I'm really happy and honored to be part of this show. The fate that brought me to this acting profession goes back to my high school days. There was a talent competition in our school to celebrate November the 20th, Vietnamese Teachers Day. And my class was assigned the task of writing a script. At that time, we didn't even know what a script was, meaning to write a story or a skit. And then rehearsed with classmates for the inter-school talent show. I was assigned that task, wrote the script, practiced with classmates, and then competed. Unexpectedly, we won a prize, whether you consider that fate or not. Recently, remembering those emotions and meeting old friends and teachers from that time, it seems that I had that fate from my high school days. When you came to Ho Chi Minh City to study at the University of Theater and Film, you participated in the film War Win of Love in your first year, and in your third year you were in the film Calling Dreams Back. I remember War Win of Love was around 2003 to 2004. As for Calling Dreams Back, it was in 2007. I often jokingly tell my friends and students that I was fortunate never to have to audition or play supporting roles. But on the flip side, it's not because I was famous or attracted attention as a student. It just happened that a photo I took with a classmate who already had a role caught someone's eye. They asked if I was studying acting, and my friend confirmed, saying we were classmates. After that, I was invited. At that time, I didn't know the professional terms they used. But they said I was someone they had only seen in the photo. They invited me to have a look and they found me suitable for the role in Whirlwind of Love, playing a character named Wook. It gained a lot of audience attention, and it was fortunate that it all started from a single photo. For calling Dreams Back, I was in the first choice for that role. Due to some incident, I ended up replacing another actor. And after doing that replacement, the producer thought I did well. So they continued to invite me until the end of the film. How did you feel when you got your first role? Certainly. It was nervous, genuinely nervous because at that time, I was only in my first year studying acting techniques. Regarding the practical skills of an actor, it wasn't fully developed yet. So when I got that role, I received a script from the producer. It was worrying. One thing for sure is that I remember being very happy. So happy that I had to boast to my fellow students studying acting at that time. Throughout your acting career, do you have any particular memorable moments? 
There are many because I've participated in many films. But one of the most significant memories which I only realized later in life was during a period when I was filming and the play at the theater where I worked was about to start. I had to rush from the film set back to the theater instead of the usual 30-minute journey. When I was allowed to run from the film crew to the theater, it only took about 10 to 12 minutes if I were fined for traffic violation now. I would obey. Back then, it seemed I didn't pay attention to traffic lights or intersections. There was a time I recalled that if there were any traffic issues during that period, I would likely regret it. After experiencing many problems, and you still seem to love your profession, and you have a fiery passion for it, how do you nurture and maintain that passion for your profession? To sum up and convey to you, my friends or my students now, I often say that you should strive to learn, enhance the skills that your teacher have taught in class, learn how to master yourself, your roles, and your acting techniques, so that when you get roles, you can fulfill them well, successfully perform the roles, gain audience love, and attract the attention of art production centers. This way, you can take control of roles to performance time and the intervals between shows. When you're involved in a program, give your all, be dedicated, sincere, and kind in every task. So that once you finish a task, you don't need to worry or think about it anymore. If you take on too much and can't fully handle all the shows, it may erode the trust of the audience and all production centers. That would be regrettable. It is known that, besides being an actor, you also have another role as a screenwriter and director. Could you share more about this role? Now, I can connect this back to the initial question to answer. Why did this opportunity arise? In the past, I was quite lost, thinking that I should be more attractive, better, and more successful. So I decided to study directing, hoping to see if what the director said at that moment was right or if I was correct at that time. Thus, I went to study directing later, remembering the words of a screenwriter. I decided to study screenwriting to understand it. So besides studying acting, it seemed like fate that I also studied screenwriting and directing. Currently, I see that you are a lecturer at Gunther College of Culture and Arts. Can you share more about how you came to Gunther? The chance came to Gunther College of Culture and Arts in Gunther City. Gunther is both an elegant and bustling city, offering opportunities to enjoy peaceful countryside landscapes. and abundant fruit orchards. It is the cultural and historical capital of the Mekong Delta, known for its vibrant art scene and a remarkable economy in the South. When I participated in a program in Cần Thơ, I felt something special and good for myself. Especially as a person from the Mekong Delta, Visiting Cần Thơ felt quite pleasant. I have lived in Ho Chi Minh City for many years. Working in the film industry for many years as well. But coming to Cần Thơ, I had a personal desire to bring a small part of the knowledge I've gained and my experiences in the film industry in Ho Chi Minh City. 
I want to infuse a bit of the familiar and unfamiliar flavor into the cultural and artistic development of Cần Thơ. Specifically in theater, film and television. Contributing a small part of their flavor to the overall art and cultural development of Cần Thơ. As you just shared, Cần Thơ is a place that converges many things such as culture, arts, and lush fruit orchards. So what is your favorite place in Cần Thơ? If I talk about the best, there's no single best because there are many places in Cần Thơ that I really like. So it's hard to pick the absolute best. I wonder if V is from Cần Thơ or another province. I'm also from Cần Thơ. In that case, let me introduce Cần Thơ to V and your friends. If I were a tour guide in the early morning, you could imagine floating on the boats at the Garang floating market, then eating dishes like vermicelli soup with crab, or freshly harvested fruits from the garden, and watching the sunrise over the river. Do you find it incredibly beautiful? Listening to your description, I feel like I travel in my imagination for a morning. After that, we'll go to Cồn Sơn. Being from Cần Thơ, you probably know this place. It's a place I really like. Here, you can enjoy family-style dishes. Especially, you can travel without feeling like a tourist, but more like a family member. You can swing in the hammocks under the large fruit trees and even pick fruits yourself. Then, you can enjoy the local dishes, the specialties of each house there. This is the unique feature of Sơn Island. Also, there's the flying snakehead fish. Isn't that a strange sight? In the evening, I'll take you to Hong King's Temple, an architecturally impressive and majestic structure. After that, we'll stroll along the Ninh Kiều pedestrian street. Anyone who is a girl like you probably likes this place. There are delicious street foods like grilled rice paper, grilled corn, cassava coconut milk, and many other snacks. Next, we'll walk on the Lover's Bridge and take photos. Not finished yet. On the Lover's Bridge, I'll show you the splendid beauty of Cần Thơ Bridge at night. It's brilliantly red and very magnificent. So when you ask which place is the best, it's probably impossible to pick one. Because they are all the best. In general, Cần Thơ is beautiful. It sounds absolutely dazzling. According to the words you just shared, we can see an image of a unique, gentle and captivating southern land, especially Cần Thơ. Today, Kofi invites our audience and Mr. Tân Phát to visit another place. When you come here, you will feel really relaxed and comfortable. And it's also a peaceful place named the Trúc Lâm Phu Nam Zen Monastery. Located in Nhân Mỹ, Hamlet, Mekan Kemun Phu Ninh District, about 15 kilometers from the center of Canta City, Trúc Lâm Phu Nam Zen Monastery is considered one of the unique artistic constructions in the western region. Avina. When entering the Trúc Lâm Phương Nam Zen Monastery, the architecture immediately caught my attention. However, I wonder whether the group structures of the Zen Monastery distinguish between different sects or regions. I noticed that the roof structures resemble and differ from other temples, communal houses, or Zen monasteries elsewhere. I wonder if there is any distinction. 
có phân biệt gì không với Vihar? At the Trung Lâm Phương Nam Zen Monastery, when you stop from outside the gates, you will see a plan of modern and ancient features. For example, the statues of 18 arhats on each side, made of granite, create a sense of modernity. As you enter the main hall, you will find Buddha status carved in a different architectural style, reflecting the solemn and peaceful spirit of the Lijun dynasty. Pay attention to the vaulted roof at the dragon's head. There is an image of a soaring dragon, symbolizing the indomitable and ever-reaching spirit of the people in the Megum Delta. It's like a boat, isn't it? Exactly. Boats are very characteristic of the people in the Mekong Delta. Yes. The first highlight of the propaganda is this expansion area featuring prominent structures such as the three gate entrance, the main hall, the bell tower, the trump tower, and the rear hall, all are unified by a consistent palette of red tile roofs adorned with large wooden columns and the courtyard bay with solid stone blocks. Adjacent to the main hall on the right is the bell tower, boasting a shoring curved roof and housing the Dai Hong Jung bell. On the left side of the courtyard is drum tower featuring intricately kept wooden supports for drum, showcasing exercise, a craftsmanship and artistic mastery. Moving further inside, visitors will sense the refreshing air accompanied by the subtle scent of burning incense, creating an atmosphere of vulnerability and sanctity. A visit to the Duk Lam Phu Nam Zen Monastery is the return to a serene space, stepping into the monastery fields like entering another world where the hostile and bursting cease to exist, leaving only pure, harsh, and profound lessons in simple living philosophy. Step into such a serene space like this, I wonder if you can feel the same. This place encapsulates an image of southern people as simple, rustic, generous, and profoundly affectionate. I believe this will undoubtedly leave an unforgettable impression on visitors when it comes to our southern land. Thank you for bringing these beautiful images of Cần Thơ to everyone. Cần Thơ with its distinctive features unique to the River Roy region. He will return to simplicity and tranquility, and for those seeking a place of tranquility, come to Chuk Long Phương Nam Zen Monastery. Dear viewers, the images we've just seen conclude today's show about Cần Thơ. Kufi would like to express gratitude once again to Mr. Deng Phát for participating in the program. Thank you and to the Cần Thơ Television program for providing me with another interesting, relaxing and serene experience at Trúc Lâm Phương Nam Zen Monastery. On behalf of the team of the show, I wish you good health and success on your upcoming journey. Dear audience, our beloved land of Cung Thơ has many more beautiful and sparkling places. As young individuals, let's together spread our love for this land. With that, the show Journey to Cung Thơ comes to an end. Kofi and actor Tung Phak bid our farewell and look forward to meeting you again in the next show.